Hi, this is Samir. Welcome back to a follow-up tutorial to the foam and spray tutorial that I've done just before. If you haven't watched that one, you should do so. So we have this scene with foam and spray and we have cached our foam and spray particles with this pop cacher. Now we would like to render it with Krakatoa. So let's load our cache with the cache mode set to load. And before I turn off only during rendering, let's turn off the unnecessary objects like the foam spray and bubbles object because it's already cached and we also don't need the transport for these anymore because they are cached and I can also turn off the dynamics and all the masher etc we just would like to check out our cache here we have something special liquid particles masher it's a node group so I click with control and mouse click to get rid of all the nodes in the pipeline. All right, only during rendering I turn off for the pop cacher and now it loads our foam and spray cache. So let's jump to our interesting frame again. And now we would like to render this with Krakatoa, but let's just first take a look how it looked before when we use uh, the render settings of our flip particles group using render spheres and the result looks like this and you can also see the render speed for that one quite slow actually due to the geometry approach so in here we turn them off because we don't want to go that way anymore we would like to have this rendered by Krakatoa and now I will show you how to do that Go into our render settings and assuming you have Krakatoa SR, we go into effect and add the Krakatoa effects post effect, which will be added here. And note that this is not a renderer. So you can preview the result of Krakatoa with any renderer you use. It will be composited over the render result of any renderer you use. This is, well, to us much more useful than having it as a renderer. But let's take a look at the settings. We can see that nothing renders if we um, don't assign a particle group, so let's do that. We would like our foam and spray group to be in here. Also here we set our diffuse group and that's actually it. That's all we need to do to render our effects particles with Krakatoa SR. Please note that this is not with Krakatoa 4C4D. All right, so we can see it's pretty quick, but we need a light first, otherwise it looks rubbish. Let's render this again. And now this looks much more reasonable. Okay, so this is the main principle how it works. Let's check out some of the features for example, I can skip the C4D rendering, so it will only render the particles, actually. But I turn it off again because I would like to have that preview. Why not? I can also use motion blur, as the spray particles do contain velocity information. We'll get some motion blur on these, as we can see here. Of course, we can also change the length of the blur lines this is well this makes more sense i guess we have also all the pre computations that krakatoa sr offers like advaction which will also be applied to the particles with the velocity in that case the spray particles this is way too strong so i changed it to 10 percent and be aware that you could do this also with a pop up factional beforehand in the editor with the effect system already. All right, we also have uh, this reduction feature of Krakatoa, uh, reduce particles to um, a certain amount of the original 100%, like 20%, and we will see looks like this. Also quite useful. And we have this reduce before repopulation. So if we would use the repopulation feature, it would first of all reduce the particles and then repopulate. If I turn it off, it would first repopulate and then reduce. So 
this just a nice option I thought would be worth adding. Let's put it back to 100%, no reduction at all, and I just re-render it again, like this. Okay, so let's try the repopulation feature. Let's set it to two centimeters, that's approximately useful in the particle density that we have for our foam and spray. And we will see it will take longer because Krakatoa is now generating inter-particles between all these particles to repopulate. And we will see the result of how many particles we get in the end once Krakatoa gets to that step. Here we can see we get about 10 million particles generated in the final rendering. And due to motion blur, etc., all we advaction all the features we're currently using, it takes a little longer. I might turn these off at a later point in time, but I wanted to show you that Krakatoa can handle this. I just turn off motion blur here for faster evaluation. All right, so you can see this is, looks more populated with a lot denser appearance. We can also change here some render options. And actually all these render options are the same as for Krakatoa for C4D actually, or any Krakatoa SR implementation. So you probably know all these specific Krakatoa settings uh, if you own Krakatoa for C4D already or if you have worked with Cricket OS or before. And we can see with this bicubic point render filter, it is not as blurry as before. But well, let's turn off the repopulation feature just for speed purposes in our rendering. Let's see how long that takes now. There you go. Much faster, actually. Well, I change this to nearest neighbor and show the point filter size, the effect of that one. A little blurry if I set it to one, be much sharper and uh, draw each individual particle more sharply. You can also change the color, of course, and according to well, wavelength, etc. This will give us a different uh, lighting and coloring. Of course, we would ch if we would change the color of the light, uh, it will also give us uh, much more different colors here. So a lot of or artistic freedom, Krakatoa offers still for rendering. <clears throat> you can also add some emission, for example. Well, not enough here. So let's go a little higher, 1.5. And this gets brighter and brighter, which we want actually for our foam and spray. Could also put it even higher, but I would like to show you something special about this Krakatoa bridge. Uh, I would like to use a particle property to control the intensity of uh, this emission. And here I use the velocity and as the spray particles, which is not visible here right now because we have a much too high range maximum. So let's set it to 10. You will see that spray particles will get brighter now, get most of the emission because they have a velocity and the foam, uh, foam particles do not. So well, you can see this better if I change this to a color. So you can see all these with a velocity actually are John and blue, which are the spray particles. Can increase this if I change the range maximum, and still the foam particles remain un unlit by emission, if you want so. Uh, if I wanted more control even, and that's also something pretty cool, I could use constraints actually, effects constraints to control the intensity of emission. And I can do this for all the other features as well, for density, absorption, scattering, self-shadowing, etc. So let's try this. 
I create a particle constraint attribute. I put it in my effect scene like this and now I can well select an attribute of a particle and let's say we use the spray attribute so any particle that is actually a spray particle is now chosen by this constraint but I want the fall particles to be affected so I invert the effect if it's not a spray particle then it's it must be a foam particle and I put it in here and render and we will see that only our foam particles are actually getting blue and the spray particles remain white in this case this is a great feature so you can use all the constraints of the fax system of the effects framework to control the uh, rendering of uh, Krakatoa I turn off the invert and you can see that the actual spray particles are now affected. We can use any other constraints. Also very useful are the scattering settings which let us control well the shading of the particles by Krakatoa and light interaction. A high anisotropy value will give us only lighting at the edges and a lower one will well light more of the particles so they reflect backlight to the camera's direction much more. You can just play around with these settings until you're satisfied with the result and then just render it out and save it as any format you want. I guess you get the point. Uh, there's no need for me to go on here. The workflow is very straightforward. Just add your particle group and then tweak the settings until you're satisfied. And as I noted before, our Krakatoa bridge requires a Krakatoa SR license. If you do have a Krakatoa 4 C4D license, it's also no problem. Instead of caching your foam and spray to the FAX PCache format, you can simply cache the foam and spray particles or any other particles to the PRT Krakatoa format, which the pop cacher definitely supports. And the Krakatoa 4 C4D has a PRT loader, so you can use it with the Krakatoa 4 C4D license type as well. Or any other renderer that supports PRT, for example, or any other file format that the pop cacher is providing you with for export. So this should be it for introducing you to our Krakatoa bridge inside of FX 2.7. Hope it helped. Thanks for watching and see you soon.